Hi, I'm Jesse James Garrett, and I'm the lead designer of Aurora, the future browser concept created by Adaptive Path for Mozilla Labs. In this fourth and final scene, we'll see someone use a gestural interface to pull together data from multiple sources and get recommendations while shopping online. After the scene, I'll be back with some commentary on the specific interactions that the scene illustrates. Oh, hey, I got a message from Patrick. Don't forget to buy a present for Lori's birthday. Oh, I totally forgot. Can I do that now? Sure. I was just killing time until you got home anyway. Okay, let's see. You bought some new data glasses? Oh, that was for work. Here it is. It wants my personal information to make recommendations, but I'm not buying this for me. Maybe you should just ask Lori's mom what to get her. You always want to do things the hard way. I'll see if she's online. Hey sis, how's it going? Hey guys, what's up? We're looking for a present for Lori, but we don't know what she would like. Well, seven is a tricky age. I can hardly keep up with her anymore. We're getting her feed, but it's mostly cat pictures. Unless she hasn't authorized us for our whole feed. Oh, come on, she's only seven. She doesn't have any secrets yet. Well, we can't get a recommendation from Amazon without her personal information. Oh, I can give you that. You can? Won't she be mad? Of course I can. I'm her mom. The law says I own her data until she turns 18. And anyway, she knows I have access to it. Wow. I don't know how I'd feel about that. <laughs> well, someday when you guys have a family of your own, you'll understand. Okay, here. This is her web history profile, and I also threw in a fresh scan of toys in her room. See you next Wednesday. Okay. Let's get this finished so I can find out how the Cubs did this afternoon. They won. <laughs> Finally. This scene shows how the Aurora design would work on a large screen with a gestural interface. The wall screen contains a camera that can read and interpret the user's gestures. The user literally reaches out to manipulate objects on the screen. The browser will automatically associate objects in the spatial view with keywords based on its analysis of the object's content, as well as the context in which the object is used. But it's not foolproof. The browser can still sometimes place an object incorrectly. Fortunately, correcting a misplaced object is as simple as pushing it to where it belongs, as we see here when the character Tim pushes the data glasses toward the work keyword. The yellow-green highlights seen around some objects in the spatial view are notification highlights, indicating that a resource has changed in some relevant way. For a web page, that change might be an update to a particular piece of information the user is tracking. For a person, it might be a new post to that person's feed, or an object that person has shared with the user. Tim retrieves a workspace containing a shopping site, a price comparison engine, and an image search. Workspaces are created and configured by users, but websites can also provide specialized functionality for use in a workspace. The shopping site requests his social network connections and the semantic profile the browser has developed based on his web activities. The user must explicitly authorize that access, but even then the site's license to use that data will be revoked after 24 hours. Tim mentions that he may not be able to see Lori's entire feed. Publishing tools in the browser provide fine-grained control of who has access to what content in a feed, and people generally assume that feeds contain some content they can't see. Lori's mother shares with Tim a copy of the girl's semantic profile from her browser history and an RFID scan of the girl's toys. The conversation touches on the question of legal ownership of this data. As the owner, 
Lori's mother can place some very tight restrictions on how Tim can use this copy of the data, while still enabling him to find a good present.